56 Krishna's mission Satiki accompanied Govinda Krishna to Hastinapura before setting out on his journey Krishna had a long discussion with the Pandavas even the mighty Bhima rather surprisingly supported a peaceful settlement let not the race be destroyed peace is very much to be preferred said he the poet vyasa makes bhima speak thus in order to show that truly great warriors desire peace and that to seek peace is not a sign of fear but draupadi could not forget her humiliation holding her locks in her hand she stood before krishna and in a voice quivering with grief she said madhusudana look at these stresses of mine and do what honor requires to be done there can be no peace with honor even if arjuna and bhima are against war my father old though he is will go to battle supported by my children even if my father can keep out my children with subhadra son abhimanyu at their head will fight the kauravas i have for the sake of dharmaputra these 13 years suppressed the burning flame of anger within me i can restrain myself no longer and she sobbed remembering the great outrage krishna was moved and said weep not dhridrashtra sons will not listen to my words of peace they are going to fall and their bodies will be food for wild dogs and jackals you will live live to see us victorious and the insult to you will be fully avenged and that too soon draupadi was satisfied madhava krishna halted for the night near the city of kuchastala when news of krishna's forthcoming visit came the city was in great excitement dhridrashtra issued orders for decorating the city and arrangements for receiving janardana krishna were in full swing dhridrashtra issued instructions that dushadana dushasana's palace being bigger and more beautiful than duryodhana's should be got ready and placed at the disposal of krishna and his entourage and large tents were erected at several places outside the city along the route which krishna's chariot was to take dhridrashtra consulted vidura he said to him make arrangements for presenting govinda with chariots and elephants presents of other kinds should also be got ready but vidura said govinda cannot be bought with presents give him that for which he is coming to the land of the kurus does he not come here seeking a peaceful settlement make that possible you cannot satisfy madhava with other gifts when govinda reached hastinapura the citizens had thronged in such numbers in the decorated streets that his chariot could only progress very slowly he went he went first to dhridrashtra's palace and then proceeded to vidura's house kunti devi met him there thinking of the sufferings of her sons and overpowered by grief she wept krishna comforted her and taking leave of her made for duryodhana's palace duryodhana gave govinda welcome and invited him to dinner but krishna said with a smile emissaries eat only after their mission is fulfilled you may give a feast when my work here is completed declining duryodhana's invitation he returned to vidura's house where he rested vidura and krishna took counsel together vidura told him that duryodhana's arrogance was based on his confidence that no one could defeat him as long as bhishma and drona who he knew were under a moral obligation not to abandon him stood by him vidura said that it would be a mistake for govinda even to enter the wicked man's court all who knew duryodhana and his brothers apprehended that they would plot through fraud and deceit against krishna's life what you say about duryodhana is true i have not come here with any hope that i would be able to secure a peaceful settlement but only in order that the world might not hold me to blame have no fear for my life said krishna the next morning duryodhana and shakuni came to krishna and informed him that dhridrashtra was waiting for him 
Govinda went to the court along with Vidura. As Vasudeva came into the court, the great assemblage of kings stood up, saluting the elders with folded hands and with a word or a smile at others. For the others, Krishna took his seat. The introductions over, Govinda rose from his seat and turning to Dhridrashtra, explained the object of his visit. He made clear what the Pandavas wanted. Dhridrashtra, do not bring ruin to your people. You regard as bad what is good for you and as good what is bad. It's your duty to restrain your sons. The Pandavas are prepared for war, but they desire peace. They wish to live in happiness under you. Treat them also as your sons and devise an honorable solution. And the world will acclaim you, said Krishna. Dhridrashtra said, My friends know that I am not to blame. I desire precisely what Madhva has stated. But I am powerless. My wicked sons do not listen to me. Krishna, I entreat you to advise Duryodhana. Krishna turned to Duryodhana and said, you are the descendant of a noble line. Pursue the path of Dharma. Your present thoughts are unworthy and befit only men of low birth. On account of you, this famous line is in danger of being destroyed. If you listen to reason and justice, the Pandavas themselves will install Dhridrashtra as king and you as the heir apparent. Make peace with them by giving them half the kingdom. Bhishma and Drona also pressed Duryodhana to listen to Govinda. But Duryodhana's heart could not be softened. I pity Dhridrashtra and Gandhari, whom Duryodhana is dooming to bereavement and desolation by his misdeeds, said Vidura. Dhridrashtra once again said to his son, If you do not listen to Govinda's advice, our race will perish. Drona and Bhishma also tried repeatedly to persuade Duryodhana and turn him from error. Duryodhana was furious with everyone for pressing him in this matter to agree to a peaceful solution. He rose and said, Madhusudana, you wrong me out of love for the Pandavas. The others here also blame me, but I do not think I am one wit to blame in this matter. The Pandavas of their own volition staked their kingdom at play and being defeated, justly forfeited it. How am I responsible for it? Losing the game, they went to the forest in on as in honor bound. For what fault of mine do they now seek battle and wish to slay us? I will not yield to threats. When I was young, the elders did us grievous wrong by giving the Pandavas, I do not know why, a part of the kingdom to which they had not a shadow of a right. I acquiesced then, but they lost it at play. I refused to return it to them. I am utterly blameless. I will not give the Pandavas an inch of land, not even a needle point of it. When Duryodhana said that he had not committed wrong, Govinda laughed and said, The play was fraudulently arranged by you in conspiracy with Shakuni, and you afterwards insulted Draupadi in an assembly of princes, and yet you have the impudence to say that you have committed no wrong, and reminded him of the other iniquities he had perpetrated against the Pandavas. Dushasana, seeing that Bhishma and others were accepting Krishna's indictment of Duryodhana, said, Brother, it seems that these people have a plot to bind you with ropes and hand you over to the Pandavas. Let us get away from here. And Duryodhana, accompanied by his brothers, walked out of the court. Govinda addressed the court again and said, Sires, the Yadavas and Vrishnis live happily now that Kamsa and Sishupala are dead. In order to save a whole people, it is sometimes necessary to sacrifice an individual. Does it not happen occasionally that a village is abandoned in order that the country may be saved? I am afraid you will have to sacrifice Duryodhana if you want to save your race. That is the only way, Dhridrashtra said to Vidura. Bring far-sighted Gandhari here. It is possible that Duryodhana might listen to her. Gandhari was sent for and when she came to the court, Duryodhana was sent for. Duryodhana, his eyes red with anger, returned and Gandhari tried by all the means in her power to bring him round to reason. Duryodhana said no and again walked out of the hall. 
He and his friends had plotted to seize Krishna. News of this reached the court. Govinda, who had anticipated all this, laughed and disclosed his divinity. The blind Dhridrashtra, by the grace of Krishna, temporarily regained his sight and was able to see Krishna in his Vishwarupa presence in every form. Pundari Kaksha, lotus-eyed Krishna, having seen your Vishwarupa, I do not wish to see anything else. I ask that I should be blind again, said Dhridrashtra, and he became blind again. All our efforts have failed. Duryodhana is obstinate, said Dhridrashtra to Govinda. And Krishna rose and with Satiki and Vidura on either side of him left the court. He went straight to Kunti. He told her what had happened and she asked him to convey her blessings to her sons. The time has come, said she, for that for which a Kshatriya woman brings forth sons. May you protect my sons. A Kshatriya mother brings forth children to be sacrificed in war. Purushottama, um, Krishna as super, supreme being, got into his chariot and sped towards Upaplavya. War became a certainty.